Jesus, knowing that his hour was come, that he should pass out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them unto the end. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It was the Jewish feast of the Passover, the commemoration of that time in history when Moses led the Hebrews out of Egypt into the promised land by the sacrifice of a lamb. When God's holy angel went through Egypt to smite the Egyptians, only the Hebrews who marked their homes, the posts of their homes, with the blood of this sacrificial lamb were delivered. Our Lord, he knew this and chose for the, besto- for the bestowing of his greatest gifts this very day. The immolation of the lamb was a prefiguration of his own immolation on the cross by which we are spared and by which he, our Lord, was to pass over from this world to heaven, to return to his Father on the day of his ascension there, so that we also might one day pass over after our death from the world into heaven. Now, our Lord chose this day as the day on which he would give us his best gifts. St. John tells us in the gospel, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them even to the end. This sentence in today's gospel, although it is very easily overlooked, was written by St. John to distinguish the apostles, that is, his own who were in the world, to distinguish them from the angels who were in heaven and to distinguish them from the prophets and the patriarchs who were in limbo at present. And these men, the apostles, and by extension us, our Lord loved to the end, that is, always, and with a supreme love. He had always loved the apostles, but on this day, he would show the most perfect love. Being about to leave them in the midst of the world with all of its dangers and persecutions and trials and sorrows, he would take pity on them and like a most perfect father, show them the greatest proofs of his love. Now mind you, he did this at the very time when Judas Iscariot had already gotten it into his mind to betray Christ. Judas was acting truly under the influence of Satan himself. Such treachery could only be caused by the demonic. And our Lord knew this. He knew that Judas had just sold him for 30 pieces of silver. And yet, he still goes on to give them his most precious, most generous gifts. St. John mentions this, this fact about Judas, in order to increase our appreciation for Christ's virtues, particularly his humility, his patience toward the sinner, and also his kindness. On that day, while his enemies conspired against him, he chose to give us the holy sacrifice of the Mass, the Holy Eucharist, as well as the sacred priesthood. Of the Mass, the Holy Curé of ours said very beautifully, martyrdom is nothing in comparison with the Mass, because martyrdom is the sacrifice of man to God, whereas the Mass is the sacrifice of God for man. And what can we say of the Holy Eucharist? It is God himself. Nothing more need be said. But St. Augustine did 
write about it, and he said that we should recognize under the appearance of the bread what hung on the cross, and in this chalice what flowed from his side. He who is all-knowing knew of nothing more that he could give than the Eucharist. He who is all-powerful could not do any more than he does in this sacrament, and he who is all-loving had nothing more that he could give. And unless he had instituted the sacred priesthood, we could have neither the Mass nor the Blessed Sacrament. In his little catechism, the Cure of ours wrote, if I were to meet a priest and an angel, I would salute the priest before I saluted the angel. Such is the dignity of the priesthood. He continues, when you see a priest, you should say, there is he who made me a child of God in baptism. There is he who opened heaven to me by the sacrament of baptism. Or there goes he who purified my soul after I had sinned, who gives me nourishment to my soul. And he goes on, and at the sight of a church tower you may say, what is there in that place, the body of our Lord? And why is he there? Because a priest had been there and has said Holy Mass. Now the priest, each validly ordained priest, possesses a dignity which is far greater than that of the angels, yet he is still a weak human being because of original sin, the effects of it. He will at times show himself to be more of a man than of an angel, but his job is hard. Be sometimes forgiving with his faults and with his fallings, because he does forgive you in the sacrament of penance. But on this day, there is yet another grace given to us, and that is the blessing of the holy oils. Now, you might feel during that, the ceremony of the blessing of oils, a little bit lost because the, it interrupts the Mass. But that time spent at this little table is a very sacred time as many gifts which are for your salvation are being prepared. Now these oils can only be blessed by a bishop and this only one time a year on this Holy Thursday. These oils are then divided up and then shipped off all over the world to priests everywhere so that these oils can be used in the sacraments for the faithful. The first oil to be blessed is the oil of the sick. It is the matter for the sacrament of extreme unction. It takes away, this oil does, this consecrated oil, the remnants of sin for the dying Catholic. It strengthens him in his last combat on earth. And by the supernatural power that this consecrated oil possesses, it sometimes even restores health to the body. One day, it is a truth, every one of you God willing, will be anointed with the oil that is consecrated on Holy Thursday as you're about to depart this world and go into eternity. The second oil is the sacred chrism. This is used in baptisms, confirmation, of course, and the consecration of bishops and of chalices, altars, and bells, and by this sacred chrism, the Holy Ghost imprints his indelible mark on your soul at confirmation. The waters of baptism, you see, they give us a spiritual birth, but the chrism used at confirmation strengthens us 
and makes us perfect soldiers of Jesus Christ. The third oil and the last one to be blessed on this day is the oil of catechumens. It isn't the matter for any of the sacraments, but it is used at baptism. It is used in the ordination of priests. You'll see pictures where the priest's hands are being consecrated. It is by that holy oil. These are the gifts that our Lord gives us today. Now in their perpetual novena to the Sacred Heart, which we here at St. Gertrude's pray every single Friday, we make an act of faith when we say, Sacred Heart of Jesus, I believe in thy love for me. But I wonder sometimes if we truly put any stock in that prayer. Sacred Heart of Jesus, I believe in thy love for me. Today, as on the very first Holy Thursday, our Lord shows us the great generosity of his charity. Jesus, knowing that his hour was come, that he should pass out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.